What's up castaways, this is Miles Away. Welcome back to another video. So today I'm gonna to be checking out the amazing new Strymon V2 pedals, the El Capistan and the Blue Sky. Now Strymon were nice enough to send these over to me to check out, so thank you so much for that. But as always, they have no say over what I'm gonna talk about in this video. So I just wanna bring you guys my honest thoughts, some sounds I create and more. Feel free to use the chapters to skip around because we're gonna be going into quite a lot of depth here. And please do subscribe and like if you enjoy this content. We check out tons of gear, make music, all that good stuff here. All right, let's get started. Now that intro track you just heard made tons of use of both the L cap and the blue sky for all the reverb and delay that you heard. But let's go ahead and check them out in much more detail on the front panel. All right, so starting off, we're gonna be using this sound uh, to demo the pedals. It's a really basic subtractive synth sound. I'm using the OB6, but you can do this sound on any synth and these pedals will sound absolutely great with any keyboard or other instrument. So let's start off with the El Capistan. So I'm gonna enable it here. So right away you can tell it's giving just a ton of vibe. So the El Cap is a really special pedal. So it's a D-tape delay, meaning a digital emulation of a tape delay, uh, but they've put a ton of care into making basically all of the irregularities of a tape delay just for, uh, front and center for this pedal, so it sounds so organic. Tape delay is my absolute favorite type of delay. And I've really never heard a tape delay that sounds, a digital tape delay that sounds this kind of warm and emotional and organic. Um, just sounds incredible on pretty much whatever you're gonna use it with. So let's check out these uh, controls here. So basically uh, we've got our time knob, uh, which is gonna dictate the amount of delay time. You can sync this to MIDI really easily. I'm right now just using it without, cause I kind of like tape delay to be a bit more messy and a bit more sort of washy rather than being super syncopated, but it's quite easy to sync it with your DAW or with your synth or with whatever you want to, your pedal board. Um, so the time is gonna adjust the timing. You can get a nice like slap back delay really easily. all the way to really nice, slow, long repeats. The repeats is gonna increase the amount of feedback. Awesome, and then we've got a bunch of different delay modes here. So we've got three different types of tape heads and three different modes for each one. So I'll just go through these quickly. Um, so starting with fixed, which is my favorite. Um, so mode A is a short delay with a 16th note that syncs with tap tempo. 
Mode B is a medium delay um, that is dotted eighths with tap tempo. This is the one I use the most. We were just hearing it. Oops. Obviously you can change the time for all of them, but I just really like the way that mode B sounds. Uh, and then mode C is an even longer delay that's gonna be even more slow and spacey. With these three, uh, with these three ABC modes, you can really control um, the max and min speed quite easily. So moving on to the next mode, we're gonna check out multi. So multi is gonna have multiple tape heads that play sort of syncopated rhythms together that dance around the stereo field. That's mode A, mode B. Selecting different tape heads. I really like multi mode B as well. Something about the mode B's on all of three of them are really nice. Lovely. Really nice rhythm. You got the dun, da, 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 da. Awesome. That's classic. Um, and then mode C, um, we're going to get another type of rhythm. Really great if you want to do more of the rhythmic stuff. When I sync this pedal to MIDI, multi is generally what I'm going to use, whereas the other two modes, I find them just so one like wonderful and washy and great for ambient stuff that I don't usually sync them. Um, moving on to the final type of tape head, uh, single tape head. So this is the simplest, but probably just sometimes the nicest sounding like it's it's a single tape head that's the speed is fixed um and basically the time knob now varies the position of the sliding record head so i'll show you what that sounds like so mode a is going to be the tape motor at double speed so let's listen to what that sounds like Awesome. Just really, really lush and you're able to sort of um, speed it up or double the, the repeats really easily rather than getting a continuous stream of, um, of time incremental change. Really cool. Um, mode B, tape motor at normal speed. Again, <laughs> sounds really good. I use this mode B a lot. Almost getting like a chorusing sound there. That's cool. And then finally, one of the absolute coolest modes on this pedal is mode C, which is a sound on sound looper. So um, if you're familiar with kind of Frippertronics, the idea of recording tape loops and constantly adding over it and creating really beautiful ambient ever evolving pieces at different speeds, uh, you can kind of do something similar with that. This is a really great performance tool. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable the loop with this tap button and then I'm gonna close the loop with the tap button and then we're gonna keep playing over it. So I'll just try to come up with something on the fly here so you guys can see how pretty this is. We'll get more into the controls later, but I find that this looper mode works really well with lots of wow, flutter, tape age, and uh, lots and lots of repeats here too. So um, yeah, let's check out what that sounds like. Sometimes I like to start tracks just with a loop like this. And what's really cool here is we can actually adjust the tape speed. How beautiful is that? And because it's a tape looper, 
as the repeats and the loops keep going, they degrade more and more and more in this super beautiful organic way. Like to me, this sounds so similar to tape in the best possible way. And it's just, it's a sound that I've really, really, really used a lot in my music. Uh, tracks like Bring Me Back utilize this feature tons of that degrading tape loop sound. Beautiful. Okay, cool. Anyway, not to cut that out, I know it's lovely, but let's check out the other controls on the pedal. So, moving back um, to everything to sort of stock settings, we'll check out just, uh, we'll, we'll use the fixed uh, tape head B, my favorite mode on the pedal. To me, that just sounds like so lush. Um, so, turn on the repeats a bit. So, like I alluded to before, probably my two favorite controls on this pedal that I use all the time are the wow and flutter, which is going to add sort of warble and uh, instability. Kind of hear that? It's almost like a chorusing sound. So beautiful. And then the tape age, which is going to darken the tape, almost like a, a low pass filter, but in a really nice musical way. So. That's how you get those beautiful, murky, warbly tape repeats that I just love using in my music. Awesome. I could do that all day. Um, so then moving on here, we've even got a spring reverb built in, which is a new feature of the V2 pedals. Uh, the old version of the L cap, uh, to my understanding, used to have a spring reverb, but it was hidden in a sub menu and you weren't able to adjust the mix independently. So let's turn off our delay. Completely dry, boring sound now. And then let's add the spring reverb. Let's crank it here so you can hear. It's a really good sounding spring reverb, honestly. Like, I would just use that alone on a vocal or a guitar or some like more kind of, you know, less ambient stuff. Really, really nice sounding reverb. And we can mix that in with our delay uh, taps as well to get that full washy vibe. But the controls don't just stop there. So if I hold the on button here, I'm gonna enter the adjustment mode, uh, live edit mode rather. So what that's gonna allow me to do is do several adjustments. So uh, I'm actually gonna turn off the wow and flutter and tape age so you can more clearly hear what's going on because there's some really cool uh, controls that are optional but they're hidden under the panel. Right off the bat, my absolute favorite one of these is the tape crinkle. So with the tape crinkle, what you're gonna be doing is adjusting the amount and severity of tape irregularities. Um, so issues like creases, splices, contaminants on the tape. So it's just gonna add tons of that human characteristic. So I turned it all the way off. So this is what the delay sounds like now. Totally clean, right? Well, pretty, pretty clean. And then watch as I turn up the tape crinkle. How beautiful is that? I actually almost always use maximum tape crinkle. Sounds crazy, but it's just, it gives me that feeling that I love. So now if we bring back in more of the wow and flutter and a bit of tape age by leaving that by clicking the on button again. So let's bring in some wow and some tape age. We're gonna get a really emotional sound. Uh, 
Um, so then a couple other controls, really important ones. So if we go back into our live edit mode, we're going to also have control over the low end contour. So how much bass is in our delays? So a maximum bass got that really nice, warm, bassy delay. And then at maximum, uh, minimum delay, a uh, minimum bass. So that really useful tool, being able to shape the tone of your delay. Then yeah, next up. So let's go ahead and check out the repeats. So this one is a pretty cool control. So by adjusting the repeats, we're sort of essentially adjusting the tape bias, which is a, a, in, a in simple terms, like going to add a little bit more or less saturation and tape compression. So at fully to the left, it's going to be really clean and high end focus. I, I do like that sound a lot. It's really easy to hear what's going on. And then fully at the right, we're going to get this really nice crunchy delay where it's almost adding distortion to a repeat. So listen to this. You hear that crunch? And if I turn to the left, you can much more easily hear the, the transients of the repeats and it's much cleaner. Um, so the manual says to set it to about 9 a.m. for the optimal tape sound, which I find I pretty much just do leave it at 9 a.m. I really love that sound, but if you do need that more distorted sound, it can be cool sometimes to go all the way to the, to the right. Really beautiful. That can sound real nice if you, let's, let's actually do that right now. Let's crank up the repeats, get some self oscillation going. Right? Like how cool is that? You've literally got a really organic sounding tape feedback loop. Awesome. And uh, there, there are some other side features like being able to adjust the full gain, uh, but that pretty much covers the El Capistan. So let's check out the Strymon Blue Sky next. All right, so moving on to the Blue Sky, let's enable it. Great. So the Blue Sky is a really musical, hands-on control reverb that pretty much can give you everything you need for any type of reverb sound without any menu diving. So it's really great if you just want to tweak knobs and get really good sounds real fast. So let's go through first the controls. So first up, most important control in any reverb, the decay. We can go from really short reverbs all the way to heavenly, never ending reverbs. So for most of this demo, we're going to keep it on this setting because I think that's one of the biggest selling points of a Strymon reverb. I have the big sky as well, and I use that all the time. Uh, the way they do their algorithms so that the max decay doesn't get in the way, um, I just find it so usable. So really nice. Now, moving on to the different modes, we have plate, room, and spring. Now, plate is kind of overall the, the reverb I'm going to turn to most for most uses, as it sounds great, it's really clean, and it's very versatile. Uh, room is probably my favorite. It has the most character, in my opinion, and it's the best for ambient. So let's check this out. You can just get these massive reverb tails. Like, listen to that decay. Lovely. Uh, and then spring. Let's turn that down a bit. Really nice, characterful spring reverb emulation. I probably use this one the least, but it's probably best for really short reverbs where you want something just to kind of add a bit of background character rather than wash out the sound. Um, so let's move back to my favorite one, Room, and let's go through the modulation. So our next switch over is going to set the modulation uh, depth. Um, so we have off, light, and deep. So without any modulation. Sounds really great already. But now. By modulating the reverb tails, we get this really lush, warm, wide, chorusy sound. Let's max it out.
back to the plate really quick. Let's go, let's do the same thing there. No modulation. Light modulation, you can really hear it on the plate. Incredible. And then heavy modulation. but my two favorite modes on this reverb straight up are the plate with light modulation. Again, let's go through that. Super lush and gorgeous. And then the room with light modulation. To me, that's just a perfect sounding reverb. Okay, cool. Moving on to the next controls. So we've got our pre-delay, which decides how long before the reverb kicks in after the initial signal. So with none and with max. So we can use this to sort of emulate how a real space would react because if you clap in a big echoey hallway, you, the sound waves from your clap have to take uh, a few milliseconds before they hit the wall and start reverberating. So I generally like to have my pre-delay around, uh, let's say here. Really great. So moving back to a nice long decay, um, we can control the amount of low end. So you can almost create these like pads. are really bassy, sometimes I like to have no bass in the reverb. Let's bring it up to about here. Great, same deal with the highs, if we want a really shimmery reverb that's sparkling and crisp. the high end in reverb a lot so I'll usually leave that at 12 o'clock but um, one thing I want to give like a huge shout out to on this reverb is sometimes with reverbs that don't have too much uh, too many controls I'm a little bit hesitant and worried about um, whether or not I'm gonna be I'm going to be able to dial in the uh, the tone of the reverb or I'm gonna have to use EQ after the fact in logic and with the blue sky they absolutely crushed it on this low and high knob how they how they react it's exactly the type of shelving I would do if I was writing into a, a, an EQ manually. So um, I find I rarely ever have to, if ever, use EQ after I record this reverb. It just sounds great from the beginning, which in my opinion is one of the main benefits of using a really good quality reverb. You don't wanna have to mess with it after the fact um, in Logic or in your DAW. So moving on, we've got probably the biggest uh, new addition of the V2 version of the Blue Sky, which is an independent shimmer knob. So the shimmer is real special on this, and I will admit that I'm not the biggest fan of shimmer reverbs normally, uh, but this pedal was actually the pedal that sort of made me change my mind and realize that there's, uh, there's, there's some really great uses for shimmer. Um, and I think having the independent knob is what did it for me, because a lot of the times, if you have a shimmer reverb, it's like, it's that distinct sound that can be a little bit much at times. Which we can do here, but I don't usually want to use that sound. By having the shimmer on a knob, we can very carefully mix in how much we need. So shimmer on the plate mode brings in an octave above the sound. Lovely. Much more subtle, right? Something I really like to do is bring in the shimmer at the same time as I take away the highs. It creates sort of an octave pad above everything. How beautiful is that? If we hit up the extra modulation, we can kind of mix everything together into a really chorusy blend. this and turn this into a, you know, a perfect pad on its own, right? Okay, 
let's check out the shimmer on the other modes. So the shimmer on the room is really cool. So with the room, instead of just an octave above, we're going to be able to get a, um, a full octave as well as a fifth above too. So it can create some really interesting overtones. So let's bring back the high end so you can hear it really clearly. Sounds like cosmos, sounds like the space. final shimmer is a really unique one so with the final shimmer on the spring let's go ahead and bring in the spring reverb what we're gonna hear I'm gonna bring back the bass for this one if I play higher up notes we can hear it best sustain those the shimmer is actually gonna add a sub octave below the reverb with a tremolo effect that speeds up sound, right? Awesome. Bring in the modulation. So you can create these really cool moving pads under your sound. Yeah, that is the blue sky uh, reverberator. So unlike the L cap, there aren't a bunch of hidden features underneath uh, besides just the general ones that they both share around MIDI and boosting and cutting the volume. Uh, but I think the beauty of the blue sky is because it's so hands on and simple, it's really immediate just to get great sounds. And, you know, you can really quickly switch between doing a really lush long reverb and changing that into a really short, almost slapback like reverb. And having that amount of power just right at your fingertips is one of the reasons why I find this a really inspirational reverb to play with because it sounds so good and it's almost impossible to get a bad sound out of it. All right, so hopefully that walkthrough gave you guys a good understanding of just how great these two pedals from Strymon can sound. Now, with all the new V2 features and all the great hands-on control, these pedals to me are a no-brainer to recommend to pretty much everyone who's interested in these kinds of effects. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Please consider liking if you enjoy the video and please do subscribe if you're new, you're in the right place for music, music gear videos, and much more. All right, let's jump to some outro sounds and I'll see you guys in the next video.